So this is a continuation of our notes from IB Physics SL Topic 7. We were last looking at the atom, and what we see here is Bohr's model of the atom with discrete energy levels. The electron, Bohr said, can only be in the energy levels we've drawn in. In other words, the electron can be here or here, but not in the space between orbitals. If we want, we can excite an electron up to a higher energy level by shining light on it. So here is the light, it hits the electron, and the electron absorbs the light. If this light has exactly the delta E needed to bump the electron to the next energy level, then this light will be absorbed and the electron will move up to a higher energy level. Now, after a little time, an excited electron will spontaneously transition back down to its normal ground state. So it'll move back down here, and of course, when it falls back to its ground state, the electron is losing energy, and energy can't actually be lost, it can only be converted to other forms, so the energy that is quote-unquote lost is really just emitted in the form of light. So the electron falls back down, and it loses some energy, delta E, which is equal to the energy of the light which is emitted. And Bohr said that light has an energy equal to H, Planck's constant, times F, the frequency of the light. Now this idea is weird this idea that light has an energy equal to h times f, its frequency. Many physicists believed that the electron can only have certain allowable energy levels, like Bohr stated, but they thought that light could possess any energy level on a continuous spectrum. So as you dim a light, then the light's energy will decrease continuously by infinitesimally small amounts. So let's say we have a light switch and a bulb, and they're connected by a wire, here's my wire, and because the light switch is on and the dimmer here is up, the bulb is emitting light. The energy of this emitted light, let's say, is here. If I take this slide, this dimmer slide, and as I bring it down, the light gets dimmer, less intense, if I take it and I bring it down to here, well, now there's less light being emitted. So we have fewer rays. And the energy of this dimmer, dimmer light, many physicists thought, would be just infinitesimally smaller, assuming we barely lower the slide over here. And we can take this slide and barely lower it a very small amount. And now, because we've lowered the slide, there's less light being emitted. It's less intense and there's less energy, and the even dimmer light is less, has a, less, a smaller energy, which is infinitesimally smaller than what it was before, assuming we barely moved this down. So these physicists here, many physicists, thought we could continue in this manner, right, dot, 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 until we have no energy at all and there's no light shining. They, as it turns out, they were wrong. So imagine we have a flashlight, and then we'll look at what Einstein said, which was different. This flashlight emits blue light, blue rays, right? And we know the frequency of blue light is around 650 terahertz, or 10 to the 12 hertz. And let's say that this beam, this particular beam, has an energy of 862 joules, okay? Einstein said that all light including this beam, is made up of tiny light particles called photons. So in other words, the light coming from this flashlight, said Einstein, is not a nice, smooth, continuous wave like this, which is connected all the way. It's made up of little dots, little photons or light particles. And Einstein said that each individual photon has an energy equal to h, Planck's con constant, times the frequency of the light. So for this blue light, we can calculate, using this equation, 
the energy of each photon in this blue light. The energy of each photon in this blue light is h, which is about 6.626 times 10 to the negative 34. And then we multiply h, Planck's constant, by the frequency, 650 times 10 to the 12. And this gives us about 431 times 10 to the negative 21 joules. But notice, and so first let me say, this is the energy of each individual photon in this big beam of light. So if we take this energy and we multiply by 2 times 10 to the 21, well, the 10 to the negative 21 times 10 to the 21 is 1, so those cancel out. And we have 431 times 2, which is 862, the energy of the beam. So what we see is that this here, 2 times 10 to the 21, is the number of photons in this beam. So this particular beam with this particular energy and this particular frequency, that beam has 2 times 10 to the 21 photons of light. So it makes sense that nobody really had noticed that this beam was made up of photons because they're so, so small. There are so many photons in this beam that really the light beam seems continuous like a wave when really it's made up of really tiny particles. So a beam of blue frequency light is made up of lots of blue frequency photons and each photon has an energy equal to h times the frequency of the blue light. That's what Einstein said. What does this mean? Well, here's an analogy that might help us understand. Just as charge exists in integer multiples of 1.6 e negative 19 coulombs, the energy of blue light takes on only integer multiples of Planck's constant times the blue frequency. And the energy of green light takes on integer multiples of h times the frequency of green light. So all light of a given frequency, all light is quantized in this way. And quantized means it takes on only discrete, allowable, integer multiples of some base amount. So light's energy is quantized. And light, then, is made up of tiny particles, each carrying the quantum amount of energy. So we've just seen that light comes in photons, and each photon carries a quantum amount of energy, which is equal to Planck's constant, times the frequency of that particular light. And what this tells us is that the energy of a single photon, of one photon, is proportional to the frequency of that light. The higher the frequency of the light, the greater the energy of one photon. So one red photon has less energy than one blue photon, because blue has a higher frequency. Talking about red, though, here's the frequency of red light about 400 terahertz, or 400 times 10 to the 12 hertz. And if we plug this frequency into the equation E equals HF, then we get that the energy of one photon of red light is this. So let's come back, finally, to our experiment with the light bulb. If we have the light bulb connected to the switch, to the light switch, and we have some initial energy, well, let's say this is our initial energy, okay? If we want to bring this little slide down, and so we would bring it down like this, the, m the least that we can decrease the intensity by is one photon. In other words, the smallest amount of change in intensity that we can produce is the change that occurs when we take out one photon of light. And the energy will decrease by a fixed amount, 2.65 times 10 to the negative 19 joules. So it jumps from this to this. 
And if we want to bring this light switch down again, then now we've taken away another photon. And that's the smallest that we can lower the slide by. We can only lower the slide by an amount which would produce one less photon of light. And when we do that, we will lower the energy again by another 2.6 times 10 to the negative 19, 2.65 times 10 to the negative 19 joules. So this is now the new energy of this dimmer light. And then from this, the only remaining thing to do is to have zero light. So from here, we can only take out one more photon, and we will lose the final packet of energy, which was equal to 2.65 E negative 19 joules, leaving us with no energy and no light. So the brighter or more intense the light, the mo more photons there are in that beam. But the brightness, we can see, does not impact the energy of any single individual photon. Every photon, each individual photon, has a fixed energy based on the frequency of the photon's light. So the last thing we'll look at, how does this all relate to the atom with an electron? Well, what we remember is that when an electron transitions down to a lower energy level, by definition, it's losing energy, and that lost energy must be converted to some other form. And we know that the lost energy of the electron is converted into light. So when the electron falls to a lower energy level, it emits light. And Bohr said that the delta E, the change in energy for the electron, or the energy lost, is equal to the energy of the emitted light. And we said that that energy of the emitted light is equal to Planck's constant times the frequency of the light. But we now know that this equation here says that when an electron drops to a lower energy level, it emits exactly one photon, hf. And that should make you smile, because it means that the world that we live in, the universe, is a simple place.